going on traders triforce trader here coming at you with a new youtube video series called basic trading information or basic trading info the objectives of this particular series is to teach you all the basic information that you should know before you start diving into the market and trading and all of that now we are going to cover what is a stock what is an option what is the futures market slash commodities market technical analysis maybe a little bit of fundamental analysis maybe some algorithmic trading stuff just kind of giving you like a general foundation of what things are and some avenues to go down to learn more about those things my hope is is that you learn a lot from this course it's free and that you take something away that may spark your imagination to go down the path that you think is right for you in trading let's dive in so the first question is always like for someone who's new like well what is a stock and and basically a stock is shares in a company. The idea being that if you buy shares of a company, you're investing in the company, your hope is, is that the company does well, the stock price goes up and then you make money. But before the electronic age, which we are all used to now, everything was done on a trading floor. And actually a lot of the companies that you would invest in would have these certificates, these like stock certificates. And like I wrote down here for the first 400 plus years of investing history if you bought a stock it came with a physical certificate so this is what it looked like it's not the most fancy one the walt disney ones are super fancy in my opinion like i said when we're talking about shares we're talking about stocks so if you bought 100 shares of apple at a hundred dollars in order to hold that you would have to turn over ten thousand dollars to buy that and the way you come up with this calculation for shares which is very simple which is why most people are stock traders because when we go into like how to calculate contracts for the futures market it, that's when it can get a little bit more difficult but for stocks it's like you take whatever the share price is how many shares you want to buy a hundred shares times a hundred dollars that's a trading price and so you'd have to give over ten thousand dollars to hold that now one thing to keep in mind is is that if you buy a ten thousand dollars worth of apple in this example you can't actually lose more than ten thousand dollars so if the stock goes to zero the worst that could happen to you is you lose ten thousand dollars and that's different than shorting these are all things we'll cover in the future but just keep that in mind if you're trading a one dollar stock you buy a hundred shares it's a hundred dollars you have to fork over now there are actually different types of shareholders inside of a stock and a lot of retail traders so if you hear me say retail i'm talking to you and myself we're not professionals no one in the stock market can ever proclaim they are a professional trader without being designated as a professional by the exchanges because you're a retail trader you when you're trading stock in XYZ company, you're trading what's known as common stock. And common stock is just something that represents ownership of a corporation. In a liquidation, a liquidation means that the company is going out of business. So if you ever hear the word liquidation, that's what that means. When that happens, or if that happens to your company, you as the common stockholder, if you're holding that position long, okay, you're invested in that company, you will receive whatever assets remain after creditors, bondholders, and preferred stockholders. Basically, you're the low man on the totem pole. You're not getting paid out anything until until everyone else before you would in that order creditors, bondholders, preferred stockholders is paid out. Those people may actually walk away with a profit and not suffer the massive loss that you're about to suffer. So keep that in mind. And that's why I want to talk about these things. Also, as other vocabulary, I want to talk about value stocks and growth stocks. So still those fall under the classification of common stockholders. We have value stocks are stocks that are lower in price in relation to their fundamentals. That's someone's opinion. That's not like a real thing. It's to value a business, you can get close to valuing it, but that doesn't mean shit in terms of what the market believes it is. So value investors, I'm sorry. You can find companies that are trading quote unquote under value, but that's an opinion. At the end of the day, the market is always right. And if you ever hear someone say grow stocks, I trade grow stocks, something you'll hear. These are companies that tend to increase in value due to growing earnings. Let's talk about those other guys we mentioned before. Preferred stock. Preferred stockholders have higher claim to on distributions, for example, dividends, than common stockholders. So like one strategy for a lot of people that trade stocks is to hold a bunch of stocks that produce dividends. And dividends are basically pay 
payouts by the company ever so often. And so let's say the dividend is $10. If you had a thousand shares in that company and the dividend payout was $10, you would get that on a quarterly basis. If the stock goes through liquidation though, these people have more claim to assets and distribution rights than you who was just the retail trader. And in the event of a liquidation, preferred stockholders claim on assets is greater than common stockholders. That's right. So just because a company is going out, if you're a common stockholder, what's going to happen to you? Let's say you're long this company, they go through liquidation. I'm a preferred stockholder. If that company has bought like a bunch of buildings, tractors, whatever it may be, I have some claim to those assets and get paid out from those assets. Bondholders is another thing that a company can do. Think about how governments distribute bonds. Well, corporations can do the same thing. It works the same way as you would for almost like a government bond. The company issues the bonds, you buy them and you get a certain interest rate over time over X years. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about different exchanges in the market and I'll catch you in the next video. What's going on everyone? Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please click subscribe and hit the bell notification. Remember, it's not enough just to subscribe anymore for some fangled reason, YouTube makes you click two buttons. That's not my fault, okay? So you have to click subscribe and then if you wanna get notified on new videos, you have to turn on the bell notification.